Number 8. Wang In 2011, when he was in his late teens, a Chinese citizen sold one of his kidneys for a new iPhone and iPad. The teenager, only identified by his surname as Wang, was reportedly desperate to obtain the Apple products in order to keep up with his classmates. The items were among the most coveted electronic gadgets in China at the time, but they were steeply priced, often equal to or beyond the whole month's salary of an office worker in a big city. Wang's parents couldn't afford them, so the teen decided to sell his kidney and contacted black market middlemen on an online messaging board. The operation took place at an uncertified clinic in the city of Chenzhou, with Wang receiving 22,000 yuan, or about $3,500 for his left kidney. The teenager's cut was later determined to have been only 10% of the illicit transaction, with the middlemen keeping the vast majority of the money. His mother learned what he'd done upon seeing him with the new devices, an iPhone 4 and an iPad 2. She contacted the authorities and following an investigation, nine people were charged by public prosecutors, including three surgeons. Jail sentences of three to five years were handed out to each of those involved while a court awarded Wang's family a compensation of approximately $230,000. In November of 2012, the young man's health gradually deteriorated in the surgery's aftermath. The latest updates on his situation came seven years after he'd sold his kidney and indicated that his life had become extremely difficult. He'd spent most of his days bedridden and relied on his family to look after him. Wang, who suffered from renal failure and required regular dialysis, had also abandoned his studies and was living on social benefits. Number 7. Steph Matto A former reality TV star was forced to give up on a lucrative business that involved selling jars of her intestinal gases after experiencing heart attack-like symptoms. Connecticut woman Steph Matto, mainly known for her appearance on the show 90 Day Fiancé, had begun documenting her unique products on TikTok in 2021, and she amassed millions of views on the platform. Her business venture had commenced in November after she had received requests on the adult content site Unfiltered. The 31-year-old woman was surprised by the demand for her wind jars, and the self-described fartrepreneur was selling up to 50 jars every week. At the height of production, Matto told a media outlet that she made roughly $200,000 before ultimately announcing her retirement due to health concerns. In late 2021, Matto was rushed to the emergency room with shooting pains in her chest and breathing difficulty. Talking to Jam Press, she said, I thought I was having a stroke and that these were my final moments. At the hospital, however, an EKG revealed that the symptoms had stemmed from the accumulation of excess gas due to the woman's high-fiber diet. To keep up with production and demand specifics, Matto, for months, had been mainly living off of beans, eggs, and protein shakes. The former reality star also commented on the reactions to her unusual product, noting that while some had praised her girl-boss attitude, she'd also received negative attention and even death threats. Number 6. Marcos Salas and Laura Holiday The authorities in Palm Beach County, Florida, captured a pair of burglars in March of 2019 after they'd taken a taxi to the Boca Raton home they'd targeted. Marcos Salas and Laura Holiday, aged 34 and 33 respectively, were captured by surveillance cameras as they arrived at the address on March the 11th. Holiday checked the mailbox before she and her accomplice went to the back of the home. They proceeded to smash a rear window and then enter the property from which they eventually made off with jewelry and other valuable items. Towards identifying the two suspects, the authorities were reportedly able to gather evidence based on the footage and the taxi driver's reports. Salas was arrested and charged with burglary, grand theft and criminal mischief, with his bond being set at $56,000. He admitted involvement and a few days after he was apprehended, Holiday was taken into custody as well on similar charges. Number 5. James Sorby In 2011, a young man from England ended up in the hospital with horrific burns following an attempt to steal copper cables. The incident occurred at an electricity substation belonging to a disused post office sorting room in Leeds, West Yorkshire. The high prices paid for copper and other metals had recently caused a surge in metal thefts across the county, but 22-year-old James Sorby's attempt nearly cost him his life. 
He'd made his way into the disused room but didn't even get a chance to touch the targeted wires. A massive charge jumped a gap and connected to Sorby, sending a surge of 22,000 volts into his body. The father of one suffered severe burns to his hands and face in addition to a weakened heart, partial loss of sight in his left eye and diminished mobility in one of his hands. He survived but spent weeks in the hospital where he underwent multiple surgeries and skin grafts. As the electricity left his body, it caused a skull wound that exposed the man's brain and he required a graft and hair transplant for it. Sorby, who shared his story as a warning to other would-be metal thieves, claimed that the most traumatic moment of his recovery was when his daughter couldn't recognize him because of his facial burns. Number 4. Failed McDonald's Robbery In June of 2016, two hapless robbers targeted a McDonald's in the eastern French city of Besançon, but their criminal endeavor was promptly thwarted. After entering the restaurant, they started shouting at customers to get on the floor and, to make their intentions known, fired a shotgun blast into the ceiling. What the pair didn't know was that at the time, 11 of the 40-some customers were plainclothes members of the National Gendarmerie Intervention Group, an elite unit specializing in hostage situations. The special forces officers, who had their weapons concealed, didn't immediately intervene as they primarily sought to protect others present in the restaurant from an escalating conflict. They instead waited for the right moment to pounce on the robbers. One of them took close to $2,300 out of the register and they both then attempted to make their getaways. Members of the elite unit chased after them and caught one of the men as he stumbled on some stairs. After immobilizing him, they fired warning shots at the other robber, ordering him to stand down. The man took aim at them with the shotgun, at which point one officer responded with a neutralization shot to his abdomen. The robbers, both reported as being in their mid-twenties, were known to local police. They were taken to the hospital and subsequently charged with armed robbery. Number 3. Carjacking Attempt on Derek Lewis In May of 2021, UFC heavyweight contender Derek Lewis took to Instagram to describe an incident in which an unnamed man had tried to break into his car. The attempted vehicle theft occurred in Lewis's home city of Houston, Texas. At the time, 36-year-old Lewis, nicknamed the Black Beast, not only competed in the heaviest division of the most prominent mixed martial arts promotion in the world, but also held the record for most knockouts in his division. Multiple media outlets reported on the situation described the feared striker as the last man one would want to carjack. As he returned to his car on May the 18th, following a training session, Lewis heard some noises before discovering a man using a screwdriver and attempting to open the door on the driver's side. Lewis hit the alleged thief and then penned him down until the authorities arrived at the scene. He then posted to his social media a photo of the man being put in a police cruiser, as well as a video showing the damage to his car. Lewis also uploaded a photo of his bruised knuckles to his Instagram story, captioning it, Satisfaction. He's okay. The would-be thief had been struck so hard by Lewis that he needed to be taken to the hospital for treatment prior to being charged with criminal mischief. Number 2. Roberto Fuentes Bernal In 2016, a man from Venezuela became the target of brutal mob vigilantism after he'd allegedly mugged a man on the streets of the capital city of Caracas. The incident occurred during hard times for the South American country, as in recent years, it had been dealing with severe inflation, poverty, and a crime rate which some media outlets reported was on par with that of a war zone. During the April incident, a man in his 70s who just left the bank began shouting that Roberto Fuentes Bernal, aged 42, had stolen his money. Bernal started running but was soon knocked to the ground and savagely beaten by a group of motorcycle drivers. They reached into his pockets and handed the mugging victim a wad of cash reportedly equivalent to $5. As Bernal bled out on the curb from a gash in the back of his skull, one man poured gasoline which had been siphoned from a motorcycle tank on his body. Bernal was then set ablaze and as one witness reported, his skin began to audibly crackle and pop as the smell of burning flesh began to fill the air. Onlookers didn't intervene, but only took out their cell phones and recorded Bernal struggling to get up and fruitlessly trying to extinguish the flames that were consuming his head and body. He would have died in the street if not for the intervention of Alejandro Delgado, a youth pastor and part-time motorcycle taxi driver. 
He put Bernal out, much to the protests of his co-workers, and the accused mugger was rushed to the hospital. His eyes had been seared shut, and his scorched trachea only allowed him to speak in whispers. Bernal died two days later, and the harrowing video of the vigilante attack began circulating online. According to updates on the matter, prosecutors had charged 23-year-old law school dropout Michael Hames with pouring the gasoline. However, the case against him was considered weak as his face wasn't clearly visible in the video and witnesses were reluctant to cooperate with the police. Number 1. Nitin Vora Over a weekend in August of 2020, a bank robber in Western India was found dead after breaking into the Ujivan Small Finance Bank in Varadara. The man, identified as Nitin Vora, had used an electric cutter to gain access to the bank, where he was captured by surveillance cameras at around 12.45 a.m. Vora then took the power tool and attempted to cut through the bank's vault. The facility's Chennai-based security team alerted manager Prashant Sharma. He made his way to the bank where he was shocked to find Vora dead in a pool of his own blood. It was subsequently determined that while working in the dark, the robber had tripped on the cutter's wire. He then fell on it and the power tool fatally sliced through his neck. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a monthly allowance of $100,000 or never get afflicted by any illness until the day you die? Let us know in the comments section below.